Hello, my friends. I'm Pastor Doug, and it's good to visit with you again. I so much appreciate uh, many uh, folks checking in about my sister. Uh, Terry did have a chemo treatment last week, and uh, this week's having some more tests. But um, under the circumstances, she's doing really well and just grateful for all the support she has received. Uh, please continue to keep her and Bill in your prayers, and I know that that's what she really appreciates the most. Uh, this Sunday, we continue to focus um, and look at Christmas through the eyes of Joseph. So many of you have shared how meaningful this study has been and kind of pick them, kind of piggyback on that today and, and share with you a little bit about that in, in my short devotional. Uh, to, to do that, let's hear these words from uh, Matthew 1, verses 18 through 24. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call, they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife. Joseph made a key choice to raise a child that wasn't his. He would take on the responsibility to care for both Mary and Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but taking on and making a choice to raise the son of a God, raise the son of God is truly a big deal. He's going to play a significant role with Mary in caring and shaping the child as he grew up. But what I want us to really think about for just a moment is that clearly he made a choice. He didn't have to do this, but he chose to do it. Now, when we look at Joseph's choice, we don't want to overthink this. I believe God knew Joseph's heart and knew that he was a righteous man. And I think that's why God trusted this task to Joseph. But when he was faced, when Joseph was faced with the angel's message, he trusted God and he simply said, Yes. I can't imagine anything being more true that Joseph had more questions than answers. And yet he stepped out in faith. I also believe that Joseph was bewildered just like Mary by this holy mystery. He couldn't explain it and really didn't understand it. But in faith, he did as he was commanded. Joseph chose to do as the Lord told him. Now, when we think about how this applies to our own lives, I think about those today who have become stepmoms or stepdads, who are adoptive mothers or adoptive fathers or even foster parents. I think of all the grandparents today who are raising their grandchildren. I think of those who serve as big brothers or sisters. I think about those who are actively involved in Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. I think about those who serve as coaches and mentors and tutors to the children and youth of our communities. I think about them and I recognize that each one of them has made a choice, just like Joseph. They have made a choice to help raise and care for and nurture children that are not their own. And in making this choice, they're going to play a significant role to help children grow and develop and to become the children that God has made them to be. But it doesn't happen unless they're willing to make a choice to get involved, to literally pour themselves into these children and to love a child that is not their own. So my challenge to you this week is simply to seize 
each opportunity given to you to invest in and love a child. For some, it might mean adopting or fostering. For others, it'll be volunteering in your neighborhood. For some of you, you'll become stepmoms or stepdads, and it's going to become your life work. But whatever your circumstances, let's, je let's Joseph's example encourage you to step out in faith and to love a child that is not your own. Amen. Just a couple things that I want to share with you today. Uh, I, I am still just so happy and, and, and so excited about last Sunday's children's play. They did a wonderful job, and certainly we want to share a special thank you to Amy Whitworth and Cindy and Tony LaCroce. They just played such a critical role in allowing those children to tell their story uh, and for us to be able just to enjoy that special experience. Now we went downstairs and we had a wonderful Christmas brunch and we certainly want to thank Chris and Tammy Bowers who prepared it for us. It was so good to just enjoy that special time of food and fellowship. It doesn't seem possible, but in just about a week, uh, we're going to gather together for our Christmas uh, service, Christmas Eve service uh, at 7 p.m. this year. So this year's Christmas Eve service uh, will include a reading uh, a story for the children uh, entitled Clopper, the Christmas Donkey. Uh, I know the kids are going to really like that. We're going to sing many of our favorite carols. And as always, we're going to end the service with that special time of candle lighting. This year, we can gather in person and really looking forward to that. We also will also uh, live stream our service for those who are just not ready to come out yet. I hope that you'll consider joining us in person. Again, our Christmas Eve service will be held at 7 p.m. this year. Well, let's close our time with a word of prayer. Will you pray with me? Loving God. We don't give Joseph enough credit for being faithful and obedient when you called him to care for Mary and Jesus. It was a huge task that he accepted and showed himself to be faithful and to be so willing to share of himself fully and lovingly. Help us to help each of us to do likewise, to be faithful and to say yes when you challenge us to meet a need before us. We ask this simple prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, thank you for visiting with me. We'll talk again soon. May the peace of God be with you. Stay strong and stay safe. God bless and have a great day. Bye-bye.